Soundgarden was supposed to play on Friday. Yeah. Obviously, they were unable to do that due to the sudden and tragic passing of uh, Chris Cornell. Right. And everyone here has been trying to just kind of come to grips with that. Um, so I just kind of wanted to get your take on what he as a musician meant to, to you yeah. or just to, to pretty much everyone. It's interesting because we, we, we were on tour with Soundgarden and we were about to get to play this and then continue mm-hmm. shows with Soundgarden. So, um, you know, being some of the last guys to see him, really, uh, a lot of people are asking us a lot of questions. And, sure. I, and it's like I really have no, no comment um, on his personal state or anything like that. But I can say that he sounded great. He looked amazing. The band was having fun. They were working on new music. The one thing I can um, that I'd like people to, to remember is just how much amazing music he left for us. Um, you know, he, a lot of the other kind of fallen heroes of that era and that left us, whether it's Kurt Cobain or Lane Stanley, they didn't leave us with a lot of music, really. But Chris did, you know, solo stuff, Audio Slave, Soundgarden, many Soundgarden albums. Um, so I think the luck, we're very fortunate to have a lot of work to still remember him by and listen to. We wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Soundgarden. And um, Kim's a close friend of mine. We've made music together. He's, I've told him many times, and, and the rest of the guys, what that band means to me, so they know. Um, but I think maybe they're seeing now how much that be- band means to so many other people that mm-hmm. around the world, young, old, um, musicians, non-musicians. And um, so I will say, though, that I, I think that one thing we have to remember is that, like, you know, nobody knows exactly the circumstances around his death. And... Um, whether or not mental illness or, or medication or anything has anything to do with it, I just think we have to be careful not to make judgment on that stuff. Yep. Um, because nobody knows your story except you. And so, and nobody will know the story except for him. So I think we have to um, just kind of respect that. Chris Cornell was my favorite singer um, growing up. He's probably in my top two or three influences as a songwriter of anybody. So it's, it's felt like a giant portion of who I am as, as a musician was snuffed out you know it, it was very uh, I still have his legacy to go back and draw from but it was the biggest loss uh, professionally that I've, I've felt I mean, there's never been a musician that's passed away that's affected me like, like, like Chris. The truth is is my first guitar that I ever owned was given to me by Chris Cornell and it was signed by everybody in Soundgarden uh, back in like 1992. True story. True story. Wow. And I was I was like one two years old back then, and I I maybe wouldn't be here right now doing this, wouldn't be at this festival, and if it wasn't for Chris Cornell, and he wrote like play this with your fingers and toes and love for music and all this stuff that, you know, I, I learned how to play guitar on that guitar, and uh, so you know it's it's a really sad thing. He had, he he held, holds a deep part in my heart. He's a very powerful presence in rock and roll, and uh, his music. Um, inspired us definitely man that dude was just such a such an icon you know and it's so sad uh it's it's just so sad to see that happening so this weekend has been very special uh during our set before dark days which is a very emotional song we uh had the craziest goosebumps ever we had a moment of silence for chris cornell and it was dude that was was like the energy in there the silence the silence you know what i mean like from the silence is just like yeah silence dude like I, i felt that and we that song was dedicated to him and uh it's just very unfortunate, but may he rest in peace. We just saw them a couple of, well, like a week ago or something like that, and uh, a week or two ago, and it was fantastic. First time I've seen them in years, and it was absolutely amazing. So this came as an absolute shock for everyone, I think, and uh, it's just a great, great loss. Soundgarden fan, Audio Slave, since I was a kid. Um, you know, I remember, uh, you know, growing up, some of the first shows I ever played were like playing bars and playing covers. 
and I remember I used to cover Soundgarden songs. I used to cover Audio Slave songs, and uh, you know, so I, you know, it's been a part of my life for a long time. And this was the first time we've ever played any shows with them was on these um, festival circuits, and uh, so we actually we actually got to see, you know, some of the last shows, and you know, they were just so incredible. He his voice is uh, just. He was like an alien. He was like not real. <laughs> like, you know, he was, uh, he set a bar as a singer and as a songwriter and as a lyricist that was so high that nobody could even get a glimpse of it. You know, it was just so amazing. And then, uh, uh, and he will forever be missed. I remember it, before I even started playing guitar, I got Soundgarden Super Unknown. And I used to listen to it on my little Discman, like the yellow Discman that came yeah. with the yellow headphones, yeah. like the foam and Classic, stuff. Classic, yeah. And uh, I was 12 at the time, and I remember like that was one of the first albums. I wasn't even thinking about playing music yet, and that was one of the first albums that I was like, "This is cool. Music is cool. This means something to me." You know, like, and and it was one of the first really meaningful albums that I had. You know, the songs really meant a lot to me. The vibe of it really meant a lot to me. And then I started playing guitar and I went off in this totally different direction of listening to, you know, Dream Theater and like crazy yeah. stuff. But Super Unknown for me, you know, everyone's got their Soundgarden album. For me, Super Unknown was the one that really stuck in my mind. When we started playing as a band when we were 14 years old, the very first song we did, and this was at high school for an exam, we, we learned Black Hole Sun. No way, okay. And, and I always thought that was such a straightforward pop song when I was a kid. And then trying to learn it, and this is the beauty of Chris Cornell and Soundgarden, is they managed to make the most com complex music feel like the most pop music going, you know, yeah. and, and you didn't realize the layers of, of, of subtleties going on and rhythms. And so, yeah, so at 14, we had to learn the outro of Black Hole Sun is in 13 8 time for any of you musos. Like <laughs> and at 14, trying to learn 13 8 time, it was pretty pretty fucking weird <laughs> so yeah it tweaked my brain from a very young age and i haven't quite straightened it out so thank you chris cornell for that and for all, all you've given you've given rock fans in the world i really appreciate it yesterday was such a terrible day to 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 hear of chris cornell's passing for for me as a vocalist and a lyricist like he was such a huge inspiration because of the amount of depth and the amount of himself that he could put into his music and what i was just saying to you off camera is that all we have to leave behind are 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 the songs that we write and, and the things that we create and, and he was a hell of a songwriter absolutely too. <laughs> and I mean he was able to convey so many emotions at the same time you know uh, let alone the fact that he was arguably one of the best vocalists in rock music he was one easily in the top yep. three best lyricists For sure. I think of any genre and I think you know music is the way that we communicate with the world it's the way that we figure out how we feel about things and I think um He's going to be hugely missed by me, by, by, by his bandmates, by his family, by anybody who can be touched by the songs. And ultimately, I think um, yesterday just kind of reaffirmed that nothing's permanent. You know, we've, we've been in a situation where we thought maybe we're never going to be able to play music together again or play Rock on the Range again or do an, an alt press interview again. And I think for us, this just kind of reaffirms our, our belief that you just got to take it day by day that when it comes to writing songs that that's that's what you leave behind when you're gone so if you're if you put yourself into it then you can you can't go wrong beautiful couldn't agree but more. he will be hugely missed yeah, rest hugely in peace missed. rest in peace